To support people while we are not directly affecting patient care by getting the supplies, if you don't have those supplies, you can't treat these patients. If you don't have those supplies, you can't protect yourself from what could potentially harm you. And without every component of the machine running at full tilt all the time, we never would have gotten through this. We had supplies come in from purchasing, and I was in charge of distributing it throughout the network. And we were working 16-hour days, seven days a week for 40 days straight. I did not see my kids. Uh, they were four and two at the time. And I was also six months pregnant. It was emotionally challenging, mentally, physically, um, but we knew that we had to get it done to support the front line. You know, the first part of when the pandemic started, you know, we had to pretty much tell family members they couldn't come and visit which was very hard because, you know, I know if my loved one was in the hospital, I'd want to be with them. I got to a point to this family member, I saw them for like a week straight. Every time I call this, this we call this, this patient family, the wife's there, the two kids are there. At that time, my son was about two and a half. So all that emotion just go through my head like, what about, what, what if that was me? It's like every time you connect them, oh my God. I was kind of put in charge almost by proxy of, of managing the ventilator fleet throughout the network, which included moving ventilators from one place to the other. The decisions that I was making or, or the recommendations I was making for that matter were truly impacting patient care directly for the first time in my career. We were getting gowns, we were getting masks and stuff. We were sending them out to all the sites. Sometimes there were shipments coming in from trucks at like 10 o'clock at night. We would unload them and there was only two of us at the time. It was a lot, you know. Uh, we would <laughs> put things in minivans and we would deliver them ourselves when we had to. You know, there was times I was working 100 hours a week. I guess the bright parts of a lot of it is sometimes you got to see people go home. There's some network or some hospitals, healthcare company that don't that was not doing what we do with the whole virtual. My father caught COVID. I was not able to even get a FaceTime just to see him to say goodbye. It pushed me more to try my best to try to see their loved ones somehow. This was a 14, 15, 16 hour day. My phone was going off at two, three o'clock in the morning. The stress level that was on top of that, and I wasn't even anywhere near the front lines of this but it was just hearing the stories and seeing the incredible loss as well as the incredible you know, response by this team was just amazing. I have always wanted to make a difference in life. <clears throat> I just didn't know how. I knew I was supporting the front line, so I knew I was doing my part in helping. And I knew that one day my kids would understand. Mommy wasn't physically there helping, but she made sure that everybody had the supplies that they needed. There's a lot that goes behind the scenes that's unnoticed, and you know, I just try to bring that to the forefront you know, because we're all on the same team and we're all doing our part to make sure we can give the best, you know, care to everyone that comes into the hospital. This is the finest group of people I've ever worked with and not just because of COVID, I, I thought that beforehand. Seeing how everyone in this network responded from the very top of the organization to the, to the newest person who joined, everybody had a piece of this. If we survive what we went through, there's nothing else that we can't do. 